Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. In today's video, we will be upgrading uh, this little guy here and making it a budget 1080p gaming beast. Let's get into it. So this guy here is the Acer Aspire XC866 model D17E6. That is a mouthful and very hard to remember, but it is not a great computer right off the bat, let's be honest. Moving on to the specs of the computer here, we have Windows 10 Home 64-bit, and I will be upgrading that to Windows 11 because Windows 10 is being discontinued this year, at the end of this year. And I have a modified version of Windows that I like to run that is a little bit leaner than the default Windows installation with all its telemetry garbage and whatnot. So we're going to be removing Windows 10 and putting Windows 11 on it. As for the processor in here, we have a 9th gen Intel Core i3-9100, and that is not going to cut the mustard for gaming whatsoever for that CPU, so we'll be upgrading that as well. And inside of that CPU, we do have Intel UHD Graphics 630, which is terrible. It, it's terrible. I don't know what else to say. It's terrible. For, as for the memory, we have 8 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, and it's only single channel. We have one stick of RAM in here, which will be harming our performance. So we'll be upgrading that to two sticks of RAM, and we'll get into more of that in a little bit. We are running on a one terabyte hard drive. That's right. Hard drive. I said hard drive. In 2025, why are we still running Windows off of a hard drive? <laughs> it, it, I, uh, why, Acer? Why? So that's a WD Blue Caviar drive that's in here. I believe that's running at 5400 or 7200 RPM. I can't remember, but it's a hard drive nonetheless. It will be staying in there because we're going to be using that as mass storage. And there is a card reader in here on the front panel. Surprisingly, it works. Sometimes the Realtek card readers don't work with Windows 11 uh, due to driver issues and stuff like that. But this one does work with Windows 11, so that's a plus there. And we also have a M.2 Wi-Fi card built into this. And specifically, that is the Intel... 3168 NGW M.2 Wi-Fi card that's built into the motherboard, and that is upgradable. This Acer Aspire is also rocking a proprietary 220 watt power supply, which has no PCIe power. So we're gonna be stuck with just pulling power off the motherboard for our graphics card. So moving on, those are all the parts that we have in this computer. As you can see, it's not the greatest thing in order to game with. So we're going to get into the parts that I'm going to be upgrading this computer with today. So first up, I have an old G-Skill Aegis kit of DDR4 RAM. So this is two 8 gig sticks running at 2666 megahertz or mega transfers per second. The reason why I have to go with this speed is because the motherboard maxes out at 2666 megahertz or mega transfers per second RAM. And if you use anything faster, it actually defaults to 2133 for some reason in the BIOS. So we're going to be using two 8 gigabyte sticks. So that's a total of 16 gigabytes of RAM in here in dual channel, which will really help about the performance of this computer compared to the single channel RAM that was originally in here. Next, we're gonna upgrade the CPU. The CPU that is currently in here, as we said earlier, is the i3-9100. Now, in my stock of old parts, I have a i5-9600K that is compatible with this motherboard. So we'll be using that CPU and that'll definitely give it a little bit more lift in performance due to the extra cores and threads, especially with the higher frequency as well that's in the 9600K. Additionally, we'll be adding an M.2 SSD. That's right, there is an M.2 SSD slot on this motherboard. And I have an old SSD from my back stock. I believe it is a WD Black SN570 and it's a 512 gigabyte model of the WD Black. And this will definitely help out the performance for this computer because we're not running off a hard drive anymore which is great and last but not least the graphics card that we'll be using in this video and the graphics card that i'm using in this video is kind of a special case i've had this gpu tucked away in a corner forever and i've been looking for a project to use it on and that graphics card is an rtx 3050 m or mobile laptop gpu that's been frankenstein onto a desktop graphics card pcb so it can fit in a pcie slot yeah that one's going to be interesting. And I remember getting this one off of AliExpress or Alibaba. I, I have to see if I can find the original listing for this graphics card, but it'll definitely be in an improvement over the Intel UHD 630 graphics that's already in this computer. Now, unfortunately, one of the things that I won't be able to upgrade in today's video is that CPU cooler. I just don't have one for the 11.5X socket that will fit inside this computer case. However, what I've done is I've added some more cooling to the side panel of the case with a 120 millimeter fan to help with that CPU cooler and two 40 millimeter fans to help out that GPU cool itself down a little bit more. 
Ironically, Acer actually included an additional fan header on this motherboard, so it's almost like they wanted you to do something like this with an additional fan. Now that we have this guy all upgraded with the new parts, we're gonna get into the gaming benchmarks to see just how well this thing performs at 1080p. So the target we're looking for here is 1080p 60 FPS for all the games that we're gonna be trying to play today. The games we'll be testing on this computer build today will be Akimbot, Adam Fall, Avowed, Doom Eternal, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, and Hogwarts Legacy. The owner of this computer will be mostly playing single player games, and they're not really into multiplayer games, so I decided to go with these because they're all single player games that can be played offline. And for the gaming benchmarks, I did have a slight overclock on that Frankenstein RTX 3050. I had 150 megahertz on the core clock and 950 megahertz on the memory clock. And that overclock was carried throughout all of the gaming benchmarks. So starting with Akimbot, Akimbot actually ran really, really well. I was actually really surprised at how well this ran. It does stutter every once in a while when there is a lot of foliage on screen, especially when it's near the camera's view. However, on 1080p medium, with DLSS balanced and the render scale set to 90%, we got a max FPS of 118 FPS, an average FPS of 90, and minimum FPS of 37, a 1% low of 53, and a 0.1% low of 14 bumping that render scale up to 100%, but still at 1080p medium. This seemed to have a dramatic effect on the benchmarking results, resulting in 77 frames per second for the max FPS, 64 for the average FPS, 26 for the minimum FPS, 22 for the 1% low, and 19 for the 0.1% low. And the render scale difference between 100% and 90% is not really that much. You don't really see much of a quality degradation on screen. So for this computer build, I'm gonna be rocking the 90% scale at 1080p medium for a Kimbot. And moving over to our next game, which was Adamfall. And Adamfall is an interesting case because the developers who made Adamfall don't believe in AI upscaling. They don't believe that it's there quite yet. And I tend to agree with them. So they didn't implement any AI upscaling whatsoever for their game. So starting off with our first benchmark results for Adamfall, we were running the game at 1080p medium preset with a 100% render scale. And with those settings, we got 92 frames per second for the max FPS, we got 78 for the average FPS, 65 for the minimum FPS, 65 again for the 1% low, and 63 for the 0.1% low. So it's rock solid, stable performance there for the game on Atomfall. If we bump up the graphics preset to the high preset on Atomfall, we netted results of 83 FPS for the maximum FPS, 70 frames per second for the average FPS, 55 for the minimum FPS, 53 for the 1% low, and 45 for the 0.1% low. So running this game at high quality on 1080p actually is a very playable experience. I think anything above 60 frames per second is definitely a good, enjoyable experience, especially for a game like Atomfall. On to the third game that we tried out on this computer build, and the third game that we tried was Avowed. Now, Avowed ran a little bit worse than I was expecting, so we did have to rely heavily on some AI upscaling using DLSS and FSR in order to get a decently enjoyable experience with Avowed. So the first set of data that I got was running 1080p on the low preset using DLSS set to performance. We got a result of 75 frames per second for the maximum frames per second, 54 for the average FPS, 41 for the minimum FPS, 28 for the 1% low, and 20 for the 0.1% low. However, you can download a frame generation mod for Avowed that will allow you to use frame generation using FSR. With all those settings in combination with together, we got a result of 87 frames per second for the max FPS, 70 for the average FPS, 59 for the minimum FPS, 26 for the 1% low, and 24 for the 0.1% low. And as you can see, after installing that mod and using the FSR uh, balanced preset, we got quite a lot more playable result. And I actually didn't notice that much input latency when using the frame generation mod. So the frame generation mod is pretty much a requirement if we're gonna try and play about at 1080p medium. The next game that we tested out on the Acer here was Doom Eternal. And Doom Eternal is really, really well optimized and it just runs really great on most computers. So we didn't really have to do very much tweaking to the settings here to get a decent playable experience out of Doom Eternal on this computer. Running Doom Eternal at 1080p on high, native, no upscaling at all with ray tracing off and motion blur off. We got a benchmarking result of 192 frames per second on the max FPS. We got 147 for the average FPS, 100 FPS on the minimum FPS, 103 for the 1% low, and 91 for the 0.1% low. So it ran really, really well for that result there. And I'm actually really, really surprised that it ran that well on this computer running 1080p high with no AI upscaling whatsoever. 
Now bumping it up to 1080p Ultra, and we did enable DLSS quality with ray tracing on. I wanted to see how well this GPU would handle with ray tracing DLSS quality in the Ultra preset for Doom Eternal. And with all those settings enabled, we got a 132 FPS for the maximum frames per second, 100 for the average frames per second, 78 for the minimum frames per second, 83 for the 1% low, and 72 for the 0.1% low. So I was genuinely shocked with this result. I did not expect this computer to run the game above 60 frames per second with the ultra preset on as well as ray tracing. I thought the ray tracing was just going to tank the performance of this Frankenstein RTX 3050 that's actually a laptop GPU. So I was pleasantly surprised with that result. I did not expect it to run that well for Doom Eternal. Moving on to the two last games that I tested, these ones really do hit hard for performance on a lot of computers. The next one up is Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. We were running the game at 1080p with the medium preset on. We were also using DLSS set to the balanced preset. No frame generation was on, no motion blur was on as well, and we were using trilinear filtering. With those settings, we got a result of 69 frames per second for the max FPS, 55 for the average FPS, 40 for the minimum FPS, 38 for the 1% low, and 31 for the 0.1% low. So another thing that we tried to do here was we enabled frame generation yet again on Ratchet & Clank. So with the same settings at 1080p medium, however, turning on frame generation, with all those settings together, we got a much more playable frame rate of a maximum FPS of 111. We got 92 for the average FPS, 74 for the minimum FPS, 55 for the 1% low, and 44 for the 0.1% low. So a much better result out of Ratchet & Clank using frame generation. And the footage that you see now is actually the one that has frame generation running on it now. And I actually didn't even really notice any input latency using frame generation on Ratchet & Clank. And it was really, really good. The video that you're seeing in the background now is that, that benchmark run right there with all this data that I collected. And as you can see, it's running really, really well with a lot of things going on in the background, lots of explosions, lots of enemies, everything. Even with the lava in the background here, it ran really, really good. The last game that we'll be trying out on this computer build here is Hogwarts Legacy, and this was in Hogsmeade. We were running the game at 1080p low with DLSS performance enabled. With those settings enabled, we got a result of 95 frames per second for the max FPS, 74 for the average frames per second, 55 for the minimum FPS, 42 for the 1% low and 29 for the 0.1% low. However, I was also curious to see how well the frame generation would work for Hogwarts Legacy because of how well it worked for Ratchet & Clank. With all those settings enabled, we got a result of 107 frames per second for its max FPS, 93 for its average FPS, 74 for its minimum FPS, 31 for its 1% low, and 26 for its 0.1% low. So as you can see, Frame generation is coming in clutch yet again for this kind of computer build. It is actually making it a rather playable experience. And there's a lot of characters, a lot of effects, a whole lot of busyness that's happening in Hogsmeade in Hogwarts Legacy. So this is why I like to use this area for benchmarking runs, because there's a lot going on at the same time as uh, like foliage, trees, water effects, everything like that. A whole lot of NPC characters are running around too. So. It actually managed to hold its own quite well in, with all those settings enabled with frame generation and FSR on. So that is going to wrap up all the gaming benchmarks that we have for this Acer Aspire XC866 that we made a little gaming beast out of. And I made this for a coworker, so she asked me if there was anything that I could do. She was looking to run The Sims 4, mostly, for this computer. So it's definitely going to be able to run The Sims, no problem at all. Uh, I really wanted to try and stress test this with a a lot of heavy games like Doom Eternal, Avowed, uh, Atom Fall, uh, Ratchet Clank Rift Apart, Hogwarts Legacy. So I was really trying to push this thing to its max. And I'm really impressed with this performance coming out of this RTX 3050 mobile chip that is a Frankenstein of a GPU. The only problem is, is you do have to use a modded driver to make this work. So something like Easy Anti-Cheat is actually just going to straight up throw an error and you won't be able to play games like uh, Apex Legends, for example. It will just throw an error when you go to try and play it, which is really unfortunate. So I'll have to try and find a way to sign that driver in order to allow this computer here to play online. Other than that, it's a really good, capable gaming machine. I'm shocked. So let me know what you think in the comments section below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, my name is Ken, also known as Wiltshire, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, guys.